today I'm going to talk to you guys about the rules of life. I did a whole video that I've updated since then called the rules of repair. And I've gotten so many suggestions and so much good knowledge from other people that I have decided to actually write down these things that I've been telling people for a long time. It's called the rules of life. Now, this is something that I've talked with several people on, and this is a core of sales. It's a core of pretty much anything in your life it is this one point, and that is, let's call it rule number one. People buy into what they relate to. If someone sees something regularly in their life, they're much more likely to buy into it. Now, what does that mean? Well, guys, what that means is that's why commercials and stuff, they try and throw it up everywhere so that you can see this product or see something happening constantly. Um, it used to be infamous with like cigarettes. You know, they used to have cigarettes in every TV show and every ad and whatnot. And they would do that on purposely so everybody thought it was okay to do it. It's socially acceptable. It's the cool thing to do. It worked. It worked. See, the fact of the matter is, is people relate to it because they've seen it everywhere in their life. And now I can tell you, I live in Texas and not too many people smoke. I walk around all over the place. I meet people all over the place. And I would say a fraction of the population smokes because we don't see it that often anymore. Case in point. But guys, this whole thing, um, people buy into what they relate to. It's not necessarily about buying products. It's also about buying into you as a person. Now, one of the things that I do with my biomeds is I will, uh, when they're on my team, if I assign them a region of a, a medical facility, let's say PACU pre-op, I will go into PACU and pre-op because I, I inspect their areas regularly and I'll ask them, who's your biomed? They should know your name. And if they don't know your name, that means you're not doing your sweeps. And if you're not doing your sweeps, then they can't relate to you. You need to establish that rapport with your customers. If they see you often enough, they relate to you. And if they relate to you, they're more apt to help you complete your mission, whatever it is. If your mission is sell them some products, they're more apt to buy from you. And if, if there's a product that they see every single day, that's why I'm doing, I want to do videos for products is because if people see me use like a certain type of safety analyzer in all my videos, they're more apt to buy it because they see it. They see people using it. They relate to it versus just something that you see at a trade show. Fact. All right, people buy into what they relate to. Rule number two. Now this is something that somebody told me and it is so true. If you see something, say something. Now somebody asked me to add this to my rules of repair and it's not really something that applies to repair but it applies to life. If you see something wrong, say something. Say something to somebody, even if you don't wanna be the one that speaks up about it. Say something to somebody else that does have the gumption to speak up about it. Because in other words, nobody's gonna give a damn. Nobody's gonna give a damn. Somebody's gonna get hurt, somebody's gonna get killed. It's gonna cost more money than it should. If you see something wrong, say something. When I was in South Carolina, I was the head of the OR team. We had, I don't know, 30, 40 OR, something like that. And I had a team of people. And um, in January of this particular year, I noticed that they were putting the skull clamps. It's a, it's a fixture that screws into the, the skull and it maintains your neck orientation at a specific angle, you know, for the doctor. Well, what they were doing is they're taking this skull clamp and they were taking it and putting it out in the hallway with blood and brain material and stuff on it. It's used in neurosurgery, you know, when they, yeah, they got a cut in your skull. This fixture was sitting in the hallway, usually like on the mats next to the doctor's scrub sink with material on it. And this particular hospital was also a children's hospital, which means that parents would get, they'd gown up and they would carry or follow their children down that same hallway, walk them to the OR where they would put their children on a surgical table and entrust this hospital with their child's life. 
I don't know about you guys, but if I walked down the hallway of an operating room and I seen a metal fixture st sitting there in the hallway with blood and brain material just kind of dripping off it, I would pick my child up and I would immediately leave. Trust is gone. So in January, I seen this happen. I was like, what the hell is this? Now you guys that aren't familiar with operating rooms, all contaminated objects need to be contained when they leave the OR. There's usually large metal cabinets that they wheel into an OR, they stick all their dirty instrumentation in it, then they close the doors, and now they can exit the OR and go down to where those materials are scrubbed and cleaned. But by sticking this fixture in the hallway and then they clean the inside of the OR, they're possibly contaminating the entire hallway. And what makes it even worse is that when they clean the OR room, the precautions that are normally on the door, which are droplet precautions, tuberculosis, whatever, those are gone. As soon as they clean the OR, they take the precautions off the door and they reset the room, but there is a contaminated thing in the hallway. And it could, and I don't want to say often does, but it could have like AIDS, HIV in the blood. Because a lot of these people that have some of these real bad sicknesses, they're really sick. And if they're really sick, you don't know what they have. And sometimes it's really nasty. But you don't know what it is because they took the precautions off the door because they cleaned the room. But here's this metal object in the hallway. And I've got photos. I've got photos, guys. So here's what happened. That was in January. I let it go. Um, I wrote an email to the OR director, the nursing manager, and biomed and I said, this is what I found with the photos attached in the email. Mind you, guys, I always recommend having a CYA folder in your Outlook. So when you write an email or something like that, you archive it. Save it in CYA. Pro, pro tip. <laughs> anyway, January, I snapped photos of it. February, I snapped photos of it. They're still doing the same thing. And it was multiple OR rooms doing it at the same time, which means it is not one person that is doing this thing. It is multiple people. It is now a cultural problem. It's a culture within the OR. They, they're just, poof, their brains just flew out because they lost their, their sense of sensibility because in no way should any normal human being see something bloody in the hallway and think it's okay. But these idiots did it and they did it for four months four months. It got to be mid-April. I seen it still happening. I got real upset and I took some more photos of it and I sent an email to the OR director and I sent an email to Biomed and I think I sent it to Infection Control. Um, mind you, Infection Control was brought in on this multiple times. So at this particular facility, now this was a very reputable facility over on the East Coast. In April, I seen it happen again. I snapped photos of it again, close, far away, brain material hanging off it, etc. And I attached photos from the previous months showing all the other times that this has been happening. And the OR director, I actually in that email, let's 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 I wish I could read it. I, I think I have it archived someplace because CYA folder archived. Um, I actually said in the email that this is continuing to happen. It's happening in multiple ORs. It seems to be a cultural issue. I've, I told you guys back in January that this needs to stop. Nobody has done anything to stop it. If I see this happen one more time, I'm contacting DHEC, which is Department of Health and whatnot. And, um, Anyway, the OR director immediately went down to the, my boss, down to Biomed, and spent more time trying to get me fired for threatening him than he did trying to fix the problem. Facts. He went immediately down to the OR. If I was him, I would go immediately to the OR up to the front desk. I almost never seen this, that, this guy doing walkthroughs of the OR. What type of OR director almost never walks through the OR? 
I know I'm, I'm sidetracking, but you're going to see this all comes to a head. He went down to my boss and spent more time trying to get me fired than he did trying to figure out why this is happening. If you see something, say something. And sometimes you have to be prepared to fall on that sword. So this, this uh, hospital, they have changed their format. They implemented new processes because I threatened to contact DHEC. They started doing it the right way. They started sanitizing things the correct way and documenting it. And uh, I'm not there anymore, but I'll tell you for a fact, they changed their ways. There is no way that this is sitting outside the OR anymore. Rule number three. Mind you, this is the rules of life. Okay. Rule number three. This is pretty big. Everyone has their motives. Everyone has their motives. All right. If somebody suddenly does something for you out of the ordinary, they want something from you. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but you need to find out what's their motive before committing. Now, there are many, many things that surround this one, all right? Everyone has their motives. That could be an opportunity for you. It could be huge. Their motive might be that they want to improve their team. So they're doing something to try and, you know, coach you to be a better technician because maybe one day they want you to be on their team. Who knows? But the fact of the matter is everybody has their motives. Maybe they just want you to be associated with them. It's hard to say. Maybe they want you to buy something from them. Pretty common. But remember, everybody has their motives. Now, I, the reason I wrote this one down is because I was talking to a female biomed and she was talking about how um, a lot of guys were trying to buy drinks for her at an event and stuff. And I told her, everybody has their motives. Now, you just got to figure out what it is. Now, I'm not saying that everything is sexual in nature. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying everybody has their motives. If people are buying you drink after drink after drink, why? Why are they doing it? Especially if they don't drink. If they don't drink and they just keep buying you drinks, that's sus. <laughs> All right, guys, and this is something that you have to be aware of. If people are doing something for you that they don't normally do, why? Why are they doing it? And this doesn't, you don't have to be like offended by things. You just have to be aware and start questioning, like, why is this happening? It's not necessarily a bad thing. Maybe they want to be associated with you, but they still have their motives. Figure it out what it is. Rule number four. This is another basis to everything in your life. Follow the money. Follow the money. Why are people in denial about this? Follow the money. All major decisions are based around money. Every major decision in your life, maybe not made by you, but by the people, by the companies, by the hospitals, by, by other countries, every single decision revolves around money. No decision is as simple as it's for the good of the community. True about business agreements, employment, taxes, generosity, social programs, and even public health decisions. Follow the money, guys. Follow the money. Whenever something is going on and, and you, it starts getting a little fishy, you start being like, why are we doing this all of a sudden? Why are we switching from this brand of sensor to this one when that one's more expensive? Follow the money. Follow the money. How many backhanded deals do you guys know of? People buying people vacations. I know somebody that got a boat. I mean... Follow the money. There's reasons for things. Not everything is corrupt, but there's always a financial decision. Follow the money. It's probably one of the more basic things that everybody should know and that people are in denial. All right, the next one. The next one is a general rule that has existed for a long, long time. People still don't know this exists. It's a little known rule called Occam's razor. All right. Occam's razor is a, it's, it's, let's call it a theory, but one that's kind of proven true. All right. And it says the simplest of two conclusions is usually the most correct. You can apply this to anything. It doesn't have to be about who's lying and who's telling the truth. 
It could be about decisions that you make in life. Now, you, they call it a gut feeling as well. So if you have a really complex thing, like I need to buy this and then sell it and then do this in order to get the money in order to do that, or I can just continue working for a couple weeks and save that money and I'll have enough to make it without having to do all this other garbage. The simplest of two conclusions is usually the most correct, and that includes risk, all right? <laughs> Occam's razor. It's so important, and I, I use that all the time uh, throughout my life. Follow the money, Occam's razor, and then here's one. And I am a firm believer in this. Behavior is contagious. Think about that one. Behavior is contagious. Passion, hate, love, honor, dedication, laughter, grief. They're all contagious. Hmm. We all have a direct effect on our community. If you set an example and you're passionate about life, people will just naturally gravitate towards you. Most people want the same thing in life as you. It's true. Now, they might have a different means of obtaining that, but they all kind of want the same thing as you. We all have different ways of reaching that goal, but they all kind of want the same as you. So here's a, a complex thing. And when I, when I wrote this one, I was in an airport a week ago. And this is something I honestly believe in. If you have 10 people in a room and you have nine people picking up trash and putting it in the trash can, and there's one guy standing off at the side, that one person is more apt to bend over and start picking up with everybody else than to stand over there alone. Here's where it changes. If you have eight people out of 10 walking around a room, picking up trash and putting it in the trash can, but you've got one guy that stands over there at the side and he's like, that's not my trash, I'm not gonna do that. And he looks over at the other guy, behavior's contagious. If you took the same 10 people and nine of them were picking up trash and one guy was left out, he would assimilate to the other ones and he'd start picking up trash too, almost always. If you have one guy stand back and be like, I'm not gonna do that, or these guys are idiots, I'm not gonna do what they're doing, it's contagious. Then this guy's gonna be like, oh, I'm not gonna do it either. And then somebody else is gonna stop picking up trash and they're gonna be like, you know something? They're not picking up trash. I'm not gonna pick up you guys' trash. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna do it either. And eventually the whole entire room is not gonna pick up trash. Maybe one or two, because you know we all have embedded different ethics, but behavior is contagious. If you're passionate about something, you love something, you can inspire passion and love in people, your family is a perfect example. But if you are in a work environment and somebody is just the bad apple, they, they refuse to close work orders or they say, I'm not gonna deploy, I shouldn't have to do this. Meanwhile, the rest of the team, they're deploying because they realize this is a team effort. One guy sits back and says, you guys are idiots, I'm not gonna do that. Or like, I refuse to do it. That one bad apple is going to encourage bad behavior in the rest of the team, guaranteed. You have to fix it. As soon as you see that, you have to fix it. Behavior is contagious. That can be good or it could be bad. You have to think about that, guys. Because a lot of people, they think that, oh, just good behavior is contagious. No, bad behavior is twice as contagious. It's really bad. Sometimes bad behavior is necessary. Sometimes we're asked to do some absolutely ridiculous things, things that are bad for morale, things that are ethically complex. Now, I myself, as a team leader, I was asked to close work orders on a device that was not safe for patient use. And I told my manager, I've got it on video, I told my manager, I will not close these work orders. And my teammates will not close those work orders either. Now, it's true, the manager could have went around me and said, guys, I want you to close these work orders, but behavior is contagious. If they see their team leader saying, no, we are not going to do this, they're all going to stand in line and they're going to say, no, we are not going to do that either. But if, if the team leader folds, if they look to you as an uh, example, as a mentor, 
And if you fold, if your ethics fold for even one moment, it folds with your team. Guaranteed. So that's why they say lead by example. Behavior is contagious. Rule seven. Now this relates to something that some of you guys already talked about. Luck favors those that are prepared. Life is already enough of a gamble. Forethought and preparation allow you to maintain better control of your life. Why not minimize the unexpected risks and maximize living your life? It means just a little bit of preparation and planning will get you so much further down the road, whether that's your career, whether that's how to handle a storm, whether or not that's even how to handle your relationship, a little bit of planning will go a long, long way. A lot of people just don't do that. I, maybe I'm a little overly cautious, all right? I have a plan for a plan. It's true. Like I, I've got like 100 mile per hour rain gear in my car. I've got extra waters. I've got, uh, well, I've got even firearms and stuff in my car. Uh, you know, they're, they're locked up and everything, but they're there. Um, I have extra socks in case I have to walk home from anywhere. And it's true, I've been in floods. I've been in freezing when they shut down all the roads. I will still get home. Now, preparation isn't necessarily just about that. It's also, how many of you guys go into an interview ill-prepared? Most of you, most of you, <laughs> when I go into an interview, if it's for a company, I know if it's a publicly traded company, I know what their stock prices are historically. I know what their valuation is as a company. I know their region of responsibility. I know roundabout many of the people that are going to be at that company through LinkedIn. I do my research before I even have the interview. I will even refer to people by name during the interview. Like, yeah, I know that such and such is in charge of this team or such and such is your CFO. I know a lot of that because I do a lot of research before I interview. Preparation. Luck favors those who are prepared. Which means I am much more likely to obtain the job because I did my research than the people that didn't. Think about it. You can, you can refer this to any type of thing, even financial stuff, job stuff, healthcare stuff. I mean, think about it. You guys, you guys, you think you could just eat a double cheeseburger for every meal of your life and not expect to have high blood pressure and cardiac problems. <laughs> what? Think about it. Prepare, prepare just a little bit. And some of you guys need to prepare up here. Some of you guys need to prepare for that next incident that might happen up here. I have been a biomed during a war. I have been through almost every type of emergency that most people could think of during surgeries. From the power going out to a hurricane, to a fire happening inside the wall, to a patient's heart trying to start when it shouldn't. I have been through so many different things. But what helped me out the most is being prepared up here. I knew where my flashlights were at. I knew where my multimeter was at. It was always charged. It was always ready. My tools in my tool bag are always organized. There's nothing worse than sifting around sometimes in the dark for where a tool should be at in your tool bag. I know where it's at. I can reach in my tool bag completely blindfolded and I can find the tool. That's a promise. And that, that preparation you know, I, I, in my rules of repair, I say you should always prepare for the things that you can predict because the unpredictable will still happen. Well, that carries on into life. And that's why I say luck favors the prepared. So guys, think about that. Rule number eight, your network is your net worth. Think about that one for a moment. It's pretty powerful. Hang around with five successful people and you'll be the sixth one. I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard that analogy before. If you affiliate yourself with those that you admire, you will start to acquire the same traits. You'll be more frugal. You'll be more punctual. You'll be more polite. 
you'll be more successful. Hang around with the people that you admire and you will start to pick up their traits. And if people see that you are starting to be successful, they're more apt to take you under their wings and help you. Think about it. People want to help people. The reason they usually don't is because they're not convinced it's worth their time and their energy. So if you associate yourself with successful people, you start duplicating their behaviors, you will naturally be more successful. But at the same time, people will bring you along for the ride. It's true. Never burn bridges. And I added a second sentence in there and I added, unless you need to stay warm because <laughs> I've actually said that to somebody before. I was told once before, don't burn any bridges and uh, some bridges you need to burn. Some of them are the aforementioned point, people that you don't want to assimilate to, some, some people that you don't want in your life. Well. Here is the thing. Some people you don't want anything to do with. And I guess it still pertains to that. Be polite to them. Don't burn that bridge. Just don't affiliate with them anymore. Do unto others as you want done unto you. Isn't that like the basis of pretty much any society? Going back to the beginning of time. Do unto others as you want done unto you. So why is it do unto others is so important? So now I'm a third party company. I can't tell you how many times people call up and they, because they're the customer, they talk down at you. And it happens reasonably often. And it's not just my company, it happens all over the place. Vendors that come in to help hospitals well, what a lot of those hospitals employees don't understand is that those vendors are part of their team. As soon as they walk in the door, you're on the same team. You have the same goal. Work together. But I can tell you for a fact that I've walked into hospitals as a contractor and I'm just there to help solve their problems. And they start immediately talking down at you like you're less than them just because you're a contractor. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. Yeah, I got other calls I can do. Uh, but, you know, I've actually had to tell people before, hold on, hold on, guys. I'm here to help solve your problem. So let's work together on this, all right? Don't talk down at me and don't talk down to my team. Don't talk down to other companies. You know, we're on the same team. When they come in the door, we are on the same team. Now, I'm not saying that you should give them complete leeway. You still have to check their work, right? They're still a contractor. You're still the representative in charge of the safety of your facility. You still have to check their work. People still check my work. That's fine. Let's do it. I'll even show you what I did. But do unto others as you want done unto you. Isn't that such a simple thing to follow and yet so few people do? Thank you guys very much for watching this video. That would be my 10 rules of life. Those are pretty, pretty good rules. You follow those, you're probably going to have a better life than most people around you. Isn't that funny? Rules of repair was if you follow these rules, this line of ethics, you're going to be more successful than your peers. Guaranteed. This one here is you're just going to have a better life than the people around you if you follow these rules.